commercial sound. Hello, friends. I apologize. We had a little technical difficulty with our intro there. Um, but we are here with our dear friend, Scum Ambassador Paul Taylor Clinch today, or this evening, I should say, across the pond. Um, and uh, we're here to do a, a live demonstration uh, along with our friends uh, in Denmark. So please enjoy and thank you very much and take it away, Paul. Hi, guys. Uh, like Fran said, I'm Paul Taylor Clinch. I'm super excited to be here tonight. Uh, special thanks to our Danish friends for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a great time. Uh, today on our demo, though, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be showcasing how we can use our products for different styles. So we're not just doing the classics that we are famous for uh, with our two posters. We're actually going to be doing, showing ways of using our products in like a different way for like different types of clients, therefore expanding our reach of our products to uh, more of our clients in the shop workbase. So, to start with, we're going to set our baseline. So this is going to be super important. It's going to be very similar to how we usually do it. But I'm going to work, instead of working with the skull structure, usually we go from the front and then, uh, so come in. Usually we'll go from the front, section up, and come in like that. Um, so we use our baseline to start off with like the skull structure of the head. Today though, guys, I'm actually going to do a forward haircut. So I'm going to use my baseline from a growth pattern. So I'm gonna look for the dominant growth pattern at the back, which is the crown right here. You got it? And we're gonna start with that. So again, I'm literally not forcing the hairs. I'm actually going to allow the hairs to flow where they naturally would. Therefore, I'm still working towards the shape of my client's head, but I'm focusing more on the dominant growth pattern. So again, we're gonna create our sort of U-shaped foundation and our baseline following around from the dominant growth patterns on the client's head. So, for that, just like the rest of our haircuts, I'm going to start with my clip on my comb. And then, if you've seen any of my videos before, you're going to know that I like to start personally from the back. Uh, just because even though the side is the widest point of the head, where a lot of our educators will start, it's still a fantastic technique. It's just something that I simply prefer. And we'll come up to his obstetrical bone, come out 90 degrees from that. And 90 degrees is super important because then it's, I'm never going to go too high and force uh, a haircut on my client. So I'm working always with what they have given me and what's in front of me. This is super important. One of the reasons, guys, we do our baseline first is because if you're a customer and you've got a new customer in your shop, um, and you do an amazing fade and then you cut the hairstyle on the top, the client is still going to be wondering, oh, are you going to fix that transition? So the beauty of doing our baselines is we're actually doing that first. So we're eliminating that worry. Therefore, the customer is going to feel completely at ease straight away in the haircut. So I'm working my way around the head, coming at 90 degrees off the head to secure a strong shape for our base. And then when I've gone all the way to the front, I'm just going to work my way all the way back around. Perfect. I'm happy with that. And if we stand from the back here, we will see that we've maintained that nice square shape. So that's super important for all of our haircuts because uh, that square shape is going to help make it look more masculine. It's also going to grow out a bit nicer. If it was like a rounded shape, for it to come out back to the square, it's going to have to come up and around. Whereas here, if we cut it straight away to our square shape, we're cutting something that suits our client straight away. It's something completely personal just for them. And that is one of the reasons why I love doing our baseline technique at the start of every haircut. So again, guys, I'm just following this around. Coming up 90 degrees off my client's head. And then following it back down. So for me, uh, I personally love to cut the style first, the top, because for me, that's the most important haircut. A fade is pretty much a fade. The best fade in the world in three days, eh, it's just gonna be quite bland and vanilla. So I like to concentrate first on the style, because that way the client can actually see the finish, what the finished look is going to be straight away. And so again, if it's a new client, it's gonna give them that confidence in your shop. 
So again, guys, I'm going to start at the back, and I'm literally just going to check my lines, because obviously the clipper goes a lot faster than the scissor, so I'm just checking for any inconsistencies. Following around the other side, just to double check. All right, because I'm going to be doing basically like a creative haircut on the top today, I'm actually going to be, uh, I'm going to cut it slightly different. I'm not going to cut all of it completely square, but all of it is going to be completely blended. So I'm going to check myself and my baseline, and if I was doing, say, a classic haircut, I'll be brushing all the hair back to check myself, um, because I feel that we don't, as barbers, reward ourselves enough in the process that we're doing, um, just simply because... Everyone's had it in a shop. If you do, say, like 10 customers in the day, you might like five, three of them are good, and two you really don't like. So by working in a process that rewards ourselves as we go, we're going to find that we're actually going to enjoy our work a lot more and have that reward of feeling that you've done that sense of achievement straight away. So now if I brush my baseline hair forward, you can see it's all blended in. That is a great way of making your customer feel at ease straight away. I'm now going to come from the dominant growth pattern forward. I'm going to separate it. And if you're in the hairdressing world, you call it a profile parting. And because I'm going to do something creative on top, I'm not just going to have it as a blob square. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have different elevations. So when I talk about elevation, we're talking about weight distribution. So if I put all the hair down, it's going to leave it very square quite heavy, yeah? If I elevate it to 90 degrees, it's going to take away weight and length. And if I go above 90 degrees, it's going to take enough a lot of length. So on this side, we're going to go as heavy as we can. So I'm going to grab everything from that style. And I'm just going to drag it straight down to my baseline. And again, guys, I'm working with the idea of knowing what I want to achieve. I'm not just pulling down for the sake of pulling down. I'm pulling down because I want to have a heavier section here. And then going back on myself just for precision. And remember what I said about rewarding ourselves by brushing this forward. All this area is now blended. Yeah? On this side though, guys. What I want to do is I want to go tighter towards the head here. So I'm going to use my elevation and we're going to come up just past 90 degrees from my baseline area. I'm going to follow it around to soften in the back. Coming up. Again, I'm following it around the shape of his head. The beauty of this, guys, is you might notice it, and you might be saying, well, he's pulled right down on one side. He's gone up on the other side. What's, you know, what is that going to achieve? And what it is going to achieve is it's still going to blend in, look. However, I know that the layers are going to be shorter here than they are here. But... If you were doing this simply for a photo, it's a great thing to do because it's already blended and the customer is like none the wiser. If I brush all the top forward, you really can't see that the uh, right hand side is a lot longer. So, again, it's just a nice little trick. Again, it's kind of a purpose. I've had the idea in my head that this is the look I'm going to go for. This is what I'm going to do with you. So, because we're probably going to crop the front, and I'm going to show you like a good technique in how you crop it, rather than just brush all the hair forward and just slice it. So we're going to start off going in the middle. So, if you remember, this side's heavier than this side now, right? So I'm going to go just past that front, and I'm going to angle from that shortest point from that style. Remember that style is where I brushed it all forward here? So I'm going to go from the shortest point of that and angle down. Again, I'm not saying you would do this on every one. This is simply because I'm cutting with a purpose, with a sense of direction 
that I've had in my head, an idea that I've had, and Lewis is going to let me try it because he sat down and doesn't really have a choice. <laughs> so, guys, I'm just following that in, really emphasizing the length there. And then on the right side, Again, I'm going to come down, keep following that angle, taking away that corner. And again, it's only because I thought I'd do something like a little bit more creative um, rather than just do a, say, a pump or a side part because, uh, honestly, there's so many, many talented barbers on our team that can do that look better than I can. So I thought I'd show you something a little different. So... Again, if I brush it all forward, I know it's all blended because the whole of my exterior of my haircut already blended in, right? So again, I'm working and rewarding myself as I go. So what I've done is I've effectively cutting this shape, yeah? This length here is a lot longer than this shape here. But if I just brush it all forward as it's a forward haircut, it all looks blended. Jolly good. Going back to that fringe, what I'm going to do, guys, is we're going to come forward again with our profile part in. And remember, I was talking about elevation, right? So I'm going to come from this top bit of my style. And you can see that short bit there. I'm going to follow that around into the head. So. If we were doing a pompadour or a side part, you'd see a lot of the guys will come out here or when Bertus does it, he'll just go freehand and down. Because I'm turning it into a crop, I'm following it in the head from its natural line. Therefore, you see here, we have that sort of crop look on that one side already. Again, guys, similar thing. I'm just going to do it on the other side. Following it around the shape of the head. And I can always detail it when the hair is dry. One of the things that we say in a lot of our videos is while the hair is wet, that is your sketch. Anything you do while the hair is wet is simply like a draft. It's like a layout. And again, everything's blended, everything's lying down nicely because I followed the shape of his head and followed the skull structure. Yeah, just to give it a little bit of texture, guys, because his hair's a little bit finer on top. I'm just going to use my razor and come through with my comb. And then I like it because I just really like that sound of that, like, ch -ch -ch -ch. it's like the hair's just coming off. Sweet. All right, so that is our style done. If this was a shop environment and Lewis was my customer, we would have been like done with this in about five minutes, maximum 10. Good. But again, like I said, guys, for me, the most important thing is the client feeling at ease. So is at ease because we've squared the shape of his head. If I go too high, it's going to round it. If I go too low, it's still going to round it. So I've gone for the squarest point of Lewis's head. Um, We've cut in the style so he knows roughly how it's going to look. And simply all that's left is the fading. So we're going to do that and we're going to talk through a step by step on how I like to do it. Again, I'm not saying it's the best or the fastest or the most glam, blah, blah, blah. I'm just simply saying it's the way that works for me and uh, something that I teach here at the shop. So for safety reasons, I'm going to start with a number three guard. Uh, on my babbleus, uh, just because uh, I need to have a finishing point. I need to know, right, that is the maximum of where I can go. So I'm just going to hit my baseline with it. I'm not going to go above it, but I'm just going to hit it. And again, I'm just going to follow this around the head. And again, this isn't to take off lots of length, guys. It is simply so I know what my finishing point has to be.
How are we doing for questions, fans? We got anything? Or is it just people asking how my day is? I mean, that's fine too. Cool. Right. It's France there. Can anyone hear me? Hello. Is there anybody else there? No? Cool. Love that. If it's technical difficulties, then I'm just talking to myself like a loony. So, to start with, guys, I'm going to do like a skin fade on this, but I've now had that finishing point here, so I know I can't go any higher possible. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, effectively, a secondary bass line. Because I have that finishing point now, now I need to have a start. So I'm just following this evenly around the head. And a lot of people, you'll see, when they go in for skin, they'll go straight away with their trimmers, which is fine, but I've had it a couple of times, and I've seen lots of it uh, online, where they're still going to have that faint line. If you go in like just with like your trimmers inverted. So I'm actually going to invert my clipper first just because it's a great way of removing bulk. So I don't use up like the blades on my trimmers because like, I just found that I was just burning through blades so much on the trimmer. Whereas this is a great way to start the transition with fading. And I'm going to leave just that little bit of a gap between my zero and my trimmer because like, I'm going to come back to that. Remember I was saying about that faint little line from skin? So that is basically, I'm saving that bit for later. to my shaver. Again, fabulous. It's got to be my favorite one. Just simply, A, I like that all metal housing. And B, it was like the first shaver I ever used where my customers said that they didn't feel anything. It was soft, it was smooth on their skin. Which if you're doing these every day, all day, that's what you want to hear. Again, I'm going just under that line that I left. So, remember I said about that time? This is why, so I'm gonna use this trimmer. Now, unlike the Skeleton FX on my, clip, on my clipper, this trimmer is like an in-between. It's not quite as close as the Skeletons, and the Skeletons, uh, I haven't touched them, I just have them straight out of the box, because that's the way I like my equipment, because, uh, yeah, if anything ever goes wrong and you're used to just a customized set of tools, then you're bugging. I had a uh, funny story, true story, Five minutes before I was about to go on stage in Rome, uh, my clippers broke and I had modified and customed them. And I didn't know really what to do, so I bought just a pair of Babyliss uh, from the stand. And it threw me off because I wasn't used to them straight out of the box. So now I just have tools straight out of the box and then I just get used to that. So if you're ever in an emergency, I can plan ahead. So if you stand here, so not there, because then you might be able to see. That bottom line is definitely gone. So now, if you think about it, you know I said about that rewarding system? Right, I've now gone from skin to zero, successfully all the way around the head. And then apart from that, guys, we're going to work in columns. Because I think it's a better way of fading, because I can only move on after I've finished and rewarded myself. So, we're going to start on this side, guys. So, 
So now we've done zero to skin, let's do a half to skin. So I'm just going to come up about a finger width up and we're going to start with our half guard closed. And again, I'm not going to say that this is the best way of fading or anything like that. It's simply just the way I like to do it. And then the reason I love using Babylon is because I can just go two clicks, one, two, and because I can't count to three. I'm going to stretch out and I'm going to go just underneath that half guard closed. So that was two clicks, one click. Closed. And then by process of elimination, if there's a line, the next possible short thing it can be was this trimmer because it's in between the skeletons and the zero. And just like that, using the corners, done. Right. Next, guys, I'm going to use my number one guard closed. And the one guard is such a unique guard because that's the difference between the head is lying horizontal and therefore, like, you know, when you see like skin fade and it looks like really fresh here, to vertical where the hairs can actually lie down on themselves. That's why people with skin fades, they say, oh, it grows too fast. And then it's good in the way because they come back and essentially give you more money. But the reality is, it's just the difference between the hairs being horizontal where they're short and vertical where they're long enough to lay on top of each other. So with my one guard, I typically like to take that halfway up my transition, because that way then, all I've got to do is then the blend down. So again, two clicks with my half guard. Going just underneath. One clip. Closed. Then to refine it as I go, I know possibly, the, I know possibly, I know the next possible shortest thing I can go is my clipper all the way open after my half guard is closed. And again, I'm just going to use the corners just to really soften that transition. And then after that, guys, we've done a one down to skin. Can you see it in there? Yeah, pretty. Right, now we're gonna go for the blend. So I'm gonna work down. Remember, I used a number three, uh, just so I had a finishing point, and I know, working logically, the next possible shortest thing can be, is a two all the way open. And I'm gonna go just underneath that point. Then the two closed. By the way, guys, I do appreciate you watching tonight. I know Liverpool are playing, so I do appreciate it. So it's one and a half up, all the way open. One and a half guards close. I'm going to go back to my one guard, all the way open. just to really blur it out. Because I, I find in England, uh, typically we have a lot of like, I call it almost like a, like a close fade basically, where you fit everything in in like such a small gap, but it's just something that's popular in England. But it is one thing that I will concede that I think the US does really, really well in other countries, is they really sort of stretch out their fade work. So it looks almost like a water painting. It's just completely fluid. You can't tell where it starts, where it finishes. Because like now, guys, we've gone from skin to a number three. Yeah? And I enjoyed that so much. I'm going to do that three more times.
But you see what I'm saying about fade work? Fade work to me is simply, it's just a repetitive technique. You can always learn by trial and error, seeing and watching, doing it just It's just technique. Whereas for me, seeing the hair, seeing that vision of, right, what, what is the hair doing? What can I achieve? What do I want it to do? That's something that I think if I get excited about. That way then, that's why I do the style first, because then I can get the client excited about it as well. Uh, this time, guys, I'm going to do this section here in a bit more of like a shop time environment. So you can see that fading technique, how I would do it if we were just sat in the shop on an all day. The reason I split it into four is because then I can refine it as I go. For example, now we're going to do column two, I can refine column one as I go. Again, that sense of rewarding. I couldn't move on from column one unless I was totally happy with it. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comments if that's how you enjoy working. Or if you just do the whole head, or you do half a head, or... Yeah, so let us know how you enjoy it. So again, guys, I'm not really talking during this column because I thought I'd just show you how I do it if this was a shop environment. Uh, a lot of the questions that I get asked usually when I do these sorts of things is how long is a haircut in my shop? Uh, and I typically leave uh, 45 minutes for a haircut and it's not to say I could just like smash it out faster and get it done and out of the way. But it's more of the fact that I actually want to enjoy my day and if I feel like oh, I've got to rush this or I've got to go a little bit quicker, then for me, it's not really worth the extra money. I'd rather just enjoy coming to work rather than feel, you know, that Monday feeling of, oh, I have to go to work. Because that's not fun, is it? Let's be real. Franz, are you there yet or no? Absolutely, Paul. I was uh, just thinking it uh, might be a good time for me to jump in since you're having a quiet moment focusing on uh, this, this beautiful fade you're, you're working on. You've got a lot of friends in the house, man. Um, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, about, one of your fellow about. ambassadors, Rich, in Tampa, oh. checking in. You've got uh, friends from all over the world, Alberto, Kareng. Thomas asked a question. Um, cool. he, he said, nicely done. What model of Babilis is that, please? Uh, so, uh, usually when I do these sorts of things, I use my custom effects, the pink ones, uh, which uh, you can only get in America, as far as I'm aware. And uh, if you are anywhere else uh, apart from America and you want to get one, you've got to pay the Yanks a lot of money. So I'll uh, but no, the ones I'm using today are simply the UK version with the uh, wedge blade. Uh, the key differences are, if you look over society, the US ones are narrower. I don't know if they just assume that English people have big hands. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, the blades. Like the US one, I think, typically comes with either the fat, flat, the fat, flat uh, fade blade or a taper blade. Whereas the UK one only comes in a wedge blade and it comes with Allen keys, which is super annoying because then you actually have to go to what I assume most people would call like a hardware shop and buy Allen keys, basically. But that's the key differences uh, for me. Um, but yeah, they both have similar imports. Apart from the US, you can hang it up. I don't know if that's like a more of a popular thing uh, in the States, whereas in England, we actually like a stand. So it literally just six and charges so yeah. cheers paul thank you for the uh okay. the information and uh we'll talk to our friends at babylis about why the uh the width is different uh one thing i did note um shout out to our friends at babylis they've created a new mat uh, a mat for the uh the barber station yeah the station that has magnets integrated in it so you can actually uh set your clippers down, blade down, and they, and they stand up. Whoa. 
So you can just grab. Yeah, we were at two barber shows um, this last month uh, with Ruzel and, and, and other friends. Uh, we were at the Rumble in the Rockies. Shout out to Colorado. And then our friends uh, in Salt Lake, they had a barber convention as well. And then, of course, in Austin, Texas, we were there. And, um, yeah, they were representing. And they they have these new mats that have magnets in them so you can set your clippers so they stand up. It's pretty cool. That is awesome. I've been in England so far. We've only had one hair show. And um, I was in London, like, last month, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to them, like, finally reopening again. Um Honestly, I always have the best time when I go, uh, and I've done it a few times. Like even if I'm not working, I'll literally go just because it's a great excuse to like, catch up with friends from like around Europe or around the world. So hair shows are awesome. So I want to hear from the guys in the comments what was the last hair show they went to, uh, especially since it's all starting to reopen now, shall we say? Need. And uh, Xavier Freiburg said he loves your fate. So, ah, what a lovely young man! Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, cheers. I'll let you get back to it, mate. All right, awesome. So, guys, while me and Franz were just chirping along, uh, I've nearly done uh, panel three now. Again, you can see why I was saying that favorite to me. Uh, to be honest, it's probably because I'm not very good at it. But to me, I just find it uh, repetitive and just like boring. Uh, but again, it could simply be because I'm not very good at it. But honestly, as soon as we actually start styling, this is where we're going to see some of the magic coming in. Uh, and you're going to see why I cut it in the way I did uh, when we were cutting our style. So panel four. This time, guys, I am going to repeat it all like panel one. Uh, just to give you guys like an idea of what I did and if you got a bit lost along the way then we can start again. So we've done our skin to zero. Uh, I'm now going to go in my half guard. I'm going to go about a finger width but uh, in England we'd call it a smidgen. I don't know if that's a universal term, smidgen. Uh, but yeah, we're going up a smidgen. We talked about this last week. In America, we say a smidge. Oh, uh, yeah. Lazy, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're too lazy to finish off the pigeon. Yeah. And enjoy your smidgen. Exactly. So, guys, two clicks with no guard on. One click. And closed. If there is any refining to do, Logically, the next possible short thing it can be was my trimmer that's in between my skeleton FX and my clipper all the way closed. Again, this is how we ensure that we're giving our clients like that best service and the best possible thing we can do, which, you know, unfortunately for Lewis still isn't very good. But my half, my one guard, I'm going to go halfway up to my uh, blend and again I'm refining it by following it around coming through half guard on two clips one two again simply because I can't count to three go okay, just underneath that one then a one click and closed Again, if I'm refining guys, then my clipper is all the way open. I'm just going to use the corners just to soften it. Again, this is that process of rewarding myself as I go. That way then, if you're the sort of person that gets nervous, it's not going to matter if there is 4,000 people watching you, a classroom, or you're just simply doing your day to day. My best advice, because I get this on a lot, if uh, people want to be educators and go on stage and all of that, blah, 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 is uh, my best advice to you guys is if you are interested in that side of things, don't ever try something new that you've never done before on stage, because you won't get booked again. 
So you want to go in feeling confident. And that's why I like these systems with these steps, because I know exactly how it's going to turn out. It doesn't matter if there's nobody watching me. Uh, Lewis just come in for a haircut or it's four and a half thousand on the stage. Generally, it does not matter at all. I get more nervous doing this because I can't see people's reactions. And uh, today, because we're going to have Brad filming, we've got Sophie, I can just see her pulling silly faces at me when I say something silly. So that was my two open, two close. 1.5 guard all the way open. One point five guard closed. And number one guard all the way open. Remember what I said about that number one guard? Because so if you can get right in there, if you can see the hairs are going down here, but where that's so short from the half guard that they're like horizontal, so they're coming out. Again, just to reiterate guys. That's why I said that that one guard is so important because that is going to bridge the gap between the blend and the fade. So all the way open with my number one. Then two clicks. And then close. Just on the corners. Right, it's a great way for me to fade like this, just because you know that saying, uh, you probably hear a million people at every hair show in the world say it when they say, uh, it's all about quality over quantity. Well, that's all well and good if you're world famous and you can charge a million pounds to do a show. But unlike me, I can't do that, I'm sorry to say. So I have to work efficiently. Now efficiently means I can still enjoy my work, not worry about if I have enough to pay my bills, I still have a great time doing it. So that's why I figured out this technique for me. And it literally, it works for me. And that way then I can feel more relaxed, I can feel confident, I can work efficiently. And that way, by working efficiently and knowing exactly what I'm doing, that way is how I can get the quality. So yeah, let me know if you agree, disagree, or whatnot. So, Hurrah, fading is done. We'll do a little bit of scissor over cutting work just to soften those transitions. How much time are we on, chat? Oh, you're about just about 40 minutes in, my friend. Oh, beautiful. Plenty of time. So again, if this was a, a haircut in a shop environment, I'll be done within about five minutes. So it's not too far off um, what I'd actually be doing if uh, my client today had actually just booked an appointment. And again, guys, you're going to see like the textures and the style when we actually put some product in and have a mess around. But the beauty of how I've cut that top area is you can't actually see that the lengths on the left-hand side are longer than on the right. Remember when I was sorting out that crop and I uh, gave the hair a profile part in and then we cut in on the hair? Now it's dry, I can actually detail that a bit more. So come in. I'm just going to follow that around where I've already cut.
So guys, do let us know if you've like enjoyed seeing something like ever so slightly different from Rizal today. Uh, and if you have, that's great. And if not, then we know not to do it again. So far, you're getting nothing but love. Hey. Right, guys, if you've seen any of my work uh, online or on Instagram, you'll see that for me, it's all about silhouette. So we're seeing here, everything flows nicely. But here, you can see the potential for style. When I see these shorter lengths here versus these longer ones up here, you see that potential for style. But if I brush it all forward, everything's blended. Uh, do a little bit of razor work. Now guys, super important. This is something I like to do all the time, is I like to show my client that I'm taking out a dirty blade. So I always leave a dirty blade in there, that way then, when I'm putting a fresh blade in, the client can see that it's fresh. Just a little basic hygiene, so the client doesn't have to worry or assume, they can see it, it's right in front of them. Lovely. Okay, um, we may have lost Paul's feed for a moment. Uh, just please bear with us while we get him back. Thank you. No, can you do that? Yes, Are we back? No. Uh, yes. Yes. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Thank you all for bearing with us there. We lost Paul for a second, but he's he's, he's right back. So beautiful Sorry. work there, team. Technical England. Please. Team London. Oh no, we we don't like London. That's right. You're not in London at all. Why would I say such a thing? We're in Bath. Or if you're from Plymouth, where I'm from, it's bat with an F. So, what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to put some product in with the hair wet. And it's only because I like, I prefer drying product in because I can break down the product. It makes it a bit more malleable within the hair and it can give me that choice of movement. So, I'm going to use, is this got light, like slightly finer hair? I'm going to use our fiber cream. And I'm going to put, I don't know, about 10p worth in my hands. Or, I don't know, I think it's a similar size to 20 cents in the States. Not terribly sure. Now, the thing I love about this product is that it goes in the hair white. I love that because we have like, you know, guys are typically terrible with their hair. And they'll just put like a blob on the front. Whereas this, I really like, you have to like proper emulsify it within the hair. And what that's going to do is ensure that it's actually evenly distributed. Okay, so one technique I'm going to show you guys first is a good little trick that will always work. If it's a forward haircut, this trick will always work, copyrighted, original trademark, and all of that. If you've got a client that has like a strong, uh, Cramp. There you go, that's the end of the day. If you put your finger on it and just blast the hair, it's always going to dry evenly. It's never going to spike up or get in the way. Even if I rough dry it and then put cold air on it. Shook 
Lovely. So, nice little technique for you to try at home. It almost sounds like a little bit of like, uh, you know, the cooking shows. But here's one for you to try at home. Uh, I'm going to do the fringe snack just to secure it. powder don't put this up your nose and I'm just going to evenly distribute that just give it a little bit of volume back to my drying I'm going to use uh, the diffuser I'm just going to like grab the hair I'm just going to do like a pinching technique So, chaps and the chapettes. I'm just going to use a little bit of spray. Uh, Rooms will close your eyes or bring out a damn spray. Not that I've been precious about it. So, let's talk about our vision. So, I said to you guys at the start the shape I was going to create. I pull down here for this side of the star to maintain the length and keep that squareness. Even with all the hair spiked up like this on this side, you can see it's still perfectly square, suiting our client's face and his head shape, most important of it. On this side, where the lengths are a lot shorter, you can see I literally just texturized it through just to give it some movement. But we've got a real strong silhouette. Again, if you follow my work at all, you know that's the thing that I look for the most. Uh, in any haircut we do, and then we come around the back here, so. We've got an amazing technique that I showed you guys with just simply putting a finger at the top there. And you can see that real asymmetric sort of head shape, but that style is suiting our client. Everything is blended, everything is coming around. And yeah, that is our asymmetrically styled crop with an accent. Just because crops now have been around for a while, so how can we make them more creative? Simply by cutting accent pieces within the hair, having a clear vision of what we're trying to achieve within that hairstyle. And you saw that if the client does this for a photo shoot, I could take the picture, brush it all forward, the client has no idea. So, on that note, uh, I'm going to leave you all to it. I hope you have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much for watching, guys, especially the guys from Denmark. Uh, really appreciate you joining us. And in case I don't see you, Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you very much, Paul. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you again.